security as a career and uh, we have two esteemed speakers to address this topic for you all today i would like to give a quick introduction to the speakers of today's session first up we will have mr kaushik nath representing cisco systems to deliver a presentation for you all uh, his brief background is that he has over 24 years of experience in it industry with over 20 years plus in information security itself uh, he has in fact 12 years in cisco systems and is currently working as a security architect uh, he has the following certifications under his belt cissp cisa iso 27001 la itil version 3 and he's also iso 10012 2017 certified uh, mr kaushik is also the past president of isaka isaca kolkata chapter isc2 president isc2 kolkata chapter and he's also a co-chair startups and innovation from 2019 to 2020 at cii and then we would have mr Tartagata Datta. He is the director of cybersecurity Praxis Business School. He has 21 years plus of experience in the IT industry. He was also an ex CISO, that's Chief Information and Security Officer with India's largest NBFC. He's also an executive member of IEEE Comsoc. He was the ex-director of India's first commercial cyber range. And uh, he's also an information security lead auditor at uh, BSI, National Compliance Body of UK and SGS. He's also a subject matter expert. Uh, he is uh, ICECC awarded most influential IT security expert by Enterprise IT Magazine and also the CISO of the year 2018 by CISO platform. So folks, we have these two esteemed guests from the domain of cybersecurity who's going to address the topic that we have in hand today. And without much further ado, I would like to hand over the session to Mr. Kaushik. Mr. Kaushik, over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Pradeep. Really appreciate it uh, for introducing me and Tata in this uh, uh, seminar. And good afternoon to all of you, and really appreciate your time uh, today afternoon. And uh, uh, the agenda is very, very uh, relevant. And if you look at the topic, uh, you know, uh, is probably one of the most sought after career aspirations I can see in most of the, you know, engineering grads and uh, even non-engineering grads also. Uh, though, you know, personally, I believe that cybersecurity is not tied to any particular qualification, academic qualification, to be very specific. But yes, it's a choice you can make, uh, irrespective of whatever you know, academic quali qualifications you have. So quickly, what we'll do is the the whole presentation has been uh, segmented into three uh, major, uh, you know, uh, time frame. I will take you through another 15 20 minutes on what is happening, what is the demand, you know, why uh, there is a Just wanted to. Uh, so, Pradeep, am I audible? I can see some. Just, just confirm me that if I am audible. Uh, Mr. Kaushik, your voice was breaking for some time, but now it's again clear. Okay, fine. Sorry for that. Yeah. Uh, there might be some issue on there. So, what I what I was talking about is that uh, let us see the relevance of uh, cybersecurity as a career, uh, irrespective of what background you have. And uh, we will focus into uh, what is the industry demanding, why they are demanding it, and we will also little uh, bit of you know peek into uh, what exactly 
uh, you know hackers do so we will look at it from three different angles one is from a career aspect another is organization who are looking for cyber security professional and also the third angle what hackers do actually with the uh, with the information uh, which they are trying to get okay and then we'll drive into uh, into the area where which will be more relevant uh, for you uh, and also the purpose of this uh, the core purpose of this uh, webinar is to understand the how to build a cyber security uh, you know expert or professional career so if you look at uh, the recent uh, news you know global or uh, in country you'll see that almost this data is uh, closer to that 3.5 million you know cyber security and job requirement is there in 2021 okay so and and this is all across if you look at the bureau of labor statistics which is uh, you know from uh, 2012 to 22 that is the uh, you know uh, six years uh, you know ago and till next two years it will be a 37 percent you know uh, job growth which is unheard of it was it is not there in any other domain believe me okay and what exactly you know you might ask that okay fine being in india based in india what is uh, the opportunity looks like so if you look at this uh, volume of asia pacific which is uh, close to around 2.1514 million out of this 2.14 1.5 is in india that is that is what 15 lakhs cyber security professionals are required uh, by 2021 this is huge okay and when i say cyber security professional it they should carry a specific skill okay normal plain vanilla will not do so we will get into there and see that what kind of skills uh, are on demand and uh, and if you look at you know uh, why these skills are on demand is because uh, top job concern when you when we interviewed uh, and the other you know firms uh, consulting firms they interviewed the organizations what is their pain point you can see 37 percent of the organizations saying that lack of skilled or experienced cyber security profession is the biggest concern and what they're looking there in in that 37 percent is knowledge about the advanced cyber security concepts various types of certifications we we'll look into a couple of them knowledge of basic concept this is unfortunately is lacking you know basic cyber security concepts are also lacking though people are getting certified uh, and so on and so forth but uh, either they are lacking 360 degree angle view of cyber security or a holistic view of cyber security or probably they are uh, they are going wrong somewhere in the approach how they are approaching the uh, you know security uh, to address the immediate requirement by the organization okay another big area which is also lacking is the regulatory policies okay knowledge about these regulatory policies because these are becoming heavy on organizations who are operating in uh, in a digital time uh, digital space another is various types of degrees and you know, either graduate postgraduate undergraduate degrees are also uh, you know people are looking for so these are the indicators uh, that how and where you should put in your time effort and money to acquire these skills right now from here we will get into that why you know companies are looking for uh, information security or cyber security professional so if you look at fundamentally any organization you know be it uh, be it uh, uh, you, you look at any domain when i starting from bank to manufacturing to to space to defense they are fundamentally trying to protect three things they want to protect the confidentiality of the information they want to make sure that informations are available as and where required that is availability and they want to maintain the integrity of the information so these are the these are called information security triad cia okay and this is basically you know uh, whatever you build you know in terms of capability in terms of uh, uh, you know investment uh, focus area uh, all these things are based on these three uh, uh, triad you know confidentiality availability and integrity now let us get a little deeper here and see uh, that what exactly this means for an organize for an organization so uh, you know uh, let's take the fundamental piece of an organization specifically here is a digital organization so what they do is they deal with data okay so data is my 
is the is the is the entity which organization is trying to protect be it bank be it government organization be it enterprise whatever you take okay and what they are trying to maintain is that confidentiality of the data integrity of the data and availability of the data this is the ultimate goal of that you know organization how do they do it they deploy three things people process and technology now process and technology are driven by people so that's why i have kept people up and what they do specifically is that they create processes they maintain it they manage it they deploy they improve and they you know uh, destroy the process and recreate it rebuild it so on and so forth this is all done by you know qualified trained people on the technology side uh, i mean on on the on the process side again couple of example of you know uh, of these processes could be you know password process like what should be the password length what should be the password expiration date whether people can repeat previous password or not that is password history okay what should be the uh, you know uh, co construct of the password uppercase how many uppercase how many lowercase special characters so on and so forth so you create a process based on the business requirement okay so this is a this is a job which is performed by qualified people similarly authentication process guest access process and then this process ensures that your organization is you know uh, complied with iso so and so pci dss hipaa uh, uh, soc 70 sas uh, whatever is the compliance requirement as per your business uh, risk management and the governance part of it on the technology side what people do is they develop technology you know, software developers and hardware developers they develop various technologies they implement those technologies in the organization configure it fine-tune it troubleshoot it and that's how the entire infrastructure which is basically security infrastructure which is built on top of your uh, other compute storage networking cloud you know security cuts across every domain of uh, digital platform so that's the primary job of cybersecurity professional from a technology standpoint. And what they do is like examples, you know, firewall and IPS, uh, you know, data loss DLPs and advanced malware protection. Similarly, there are many uh, technologies which are deployed, designed, configured and troubleshoot by uh, people. And what it ensures is that it ensures that all the security events and incidences are visible. It can be, and if something is visible, you can control it okay how quickly you can detect an incidence that is called incidence detection and then how can you prevent an attack how can you protect the data okay all these things are ensured by these technologies tools solutions so on and so forth now this whole thing that people process technology and you know the various uh, uh, controls you have put across data what do they do what opportunity do they create in terms of cyber security professional so if you look at uh, the process part of it uh, we an organization typically requires process managers who manage the entire process they need auditors they need implementers of those controls similarly here in in uh, in the process side you need the you know, grc governance risk and compliance professionals for various standards then you need technology developers uh, you know uh, IT developers operations guy and uh, security architect so on and so forth and then uh, you need uh, you know uh, incident response people forensic investigators threat analysts so on and so forth. so a lot of opportunities are created out of this uh, you know goal and scope which organization creates uh, uh, though it varies from organization to organization but pretty much same the roles are pretty much same you go to any organization it is every organization is trying to protect their data so from a data protection standpoint all the controls are same however the uh, compliance requirement may be different the certifications may be different approach may be different but ultimately the goal is to ensure confidentiality integrity and availability of the data whatever is maybe the data that's these are the three goals okay now from here you know we have seen that what organization wants now let's see how hackers are targeting uh, the, the information that uh, to to exfiltrate data from the organization. So we call it cyber attack kill chain. We it is very important to understand this as well so that we have a 360 degree uh, view of who is trying to protect, who is trying to attack, and how. 
okay so if you look at this is a seven step activity what hackers do which starts from left hand side that is we call it uh, reconnaissance so during this phase what the hackers do is they do some research on the organization or the person whom they are going to hack or attack okay they want to know the background they want to know their business they want to know their weak points basically the weak they look for weak points of that organization okay uh, some some kind of identification some kind of target selection so within an organization everybody is not a target okay hackers will target only that person where they can fetch some very important data which they can sell outside because it is all commercial focused end of the day that matters okay the second step they take once they identify the right resource that this is the guy whom i need to attack or this is the application whom i need to attack okay they do what openization we call it openization means they prepare the payload that is the attack either a worm or a or a you know adware or a, a malware or a, a phishing attack or whatever once they decide that okay fine this guy can click a link once they receive the email then they launch it so that is called delivery so transfer transfer of weapon from the attacker to the victim okay so it can be a phishing mail it can be a web link it can be a database attachments or any attachments it can be a usb drive it can be whatever whatever can be the means so this mean is means is actually determined during the reconnaissance phase okay once that weapon is delivered into your system that weapon is installed that means a malware is installed in your in your uh, in your laptop or mobile phone or or desktop or whatever and it starts working from there it will not immediately harm you but it will you know it will start working it will target it will look for the important files important data points which they it can you know uh, it it can uh, compromise and take uh, advantage of and then it installs the backdoor once the backdoor is installed then it creates a channel between the laptop or the desktop where that uh, with the malware is sitting with the backend hacker we call it a uh, command and control and then start sending the data from that mobile phone or from the laptop to the hacker okay so this is a typical step when you map this typical you know uh, uh, cyber attack kill chain with the proactive reactive measures taken by an organization and if you map that with the investment organization make uh, for the entire cyber security uh, you know activities you will see that the majority of the investment in terms of resourcing planning training happens to prevent the attack that is the before stage so here you can see on the top that the entire entire attack continuum has been you know, classified into three classes before during and after it is after the attack before the attack during the attack okay so majority of the 75 percent of the investment happens during uh, to prevent the attack if there is a you know 25 percent gap because you cannot you cannot uh, have 100 percent you know uh, control over a, over a hacker or over a over a malicious intent so 15 percent happen investment happens during and after it is 10 percent which is very very reactive that everything has happened now you are just controlling cleaning your stuff okay so this is very important in terms of where you focus uh, when you go into cyber security as a career right now from here you know one of the important aspect is that what do i do next now i understand all the three angles you know uh, where is the requirement uh, what organization is trying to protect and how hackers look into it so so here you can see uh, that is, there is a mapping of sorry there is a mapping of cyber kill chain uh, with the before and during so that's why you know you have seen that before the exfiltration happened all the controls are uh, all the invest majority of the investments are done here so as i was saying that you know the, the now the question starts from uh, for an academic uh, or or a student who is aspiring to build career cyber security career and here is an example say rekha is a uh, is a lady who wants to build a cyber security uh, skill and doesn't have anything he she is starting from zero whereas vijay is starting from some basic cyber security skills he has got training certification so what should be the learning path for them okay so the learning part path 
you know, uh, you know, what we have seen is that for Rekha, who doesn't have any skill, should start, it's a mandatory, should start from uh, acquiring the basic cybersecurity skills. For Vijay, it is not necessary. As a second step, you know, both should go ahead with a specific domain-based personal interest or market demand, based on the market demand, and get uh, in-depth uh, training and certification. And the third step should be uh, more expertise on a particular subject. A very very targeted very very niche area that should be the career uh, learning track and many a times you know uh, i i face this question that what are the different cyber security career tracks are available you know i want to become uh, xyz so you know guide me so there are 10 tracks which i have mentioned here governance risk and uh, you know uh, compliance is one of the popular uh, track for cyber security then we have auditors we have incident responders, we have SOC specialists or SOC professionals or analysts, then IoT ecosystem, this is picking up in a major way, good career options are here. I mean, every, everywhere is good, but IoT is picking up because it is new. Okay, then you have software development in security, you can become a software developer and develop uh, security softwares. Then you have cloud security, you know, now, now the era is uh, cloud era, you know, a lot of uh, businesses are um, taking advantage of the uh, from the cloud and uh, cloud security definitely makes sense then training and you can become a trainer uh, for cyber security this is also very very good and you know, if you want to really sharpen your skill training is one of the area then you can become cyber forensic expert which is high on demand in the market today because a lot of hack hacking activities are going on and people want evidence so that they can prosecute them legally now the legal system will demand for evidence which only cyber security or cyber forensic analyst can acquire they can preserve and they can present it to the law uh, to the judiciary system okay last but not the least is a red team uh, you know uh, system or red team career as a red team now from career we will uh, shift into that uh, one of the another uh, very very important area people ask for that how do i select right training institute and certification because this is this is very very confusing because everybody claims that they are the best okay so couple of guidelines here though you know it definitely matters uh, personal uh, judgment but from my side the guidelines would be that look at the course content is it capturing the current and future demand more more is future but of course, uh, you need to get job right now. So uh, you need to have re uh, relevant uh, exposure. Okay, the second thing is that look at the infrastructure, what kind of infrastructure they are providing. Are they providing adequate uh, infra, the latest infra, which uh, will give you more hands-on capability. Third is faculty, who are teaching there? You know, is it only the in-house faculty or they are inviting uh, you know, industry experts to, uh, to take the courses? Okay, so I would go for around, you know, uh, 60 to 60, 40, 60% 60 external visiting faculty, 40% in-house uh, faculty. That will give you a good, uh, you know, uh, mixture of industry exposure as well as good theoretical uh, background, which you definitely need. Next is theory versus, what is the ratio of theory versus lab? Are they providing more lab? See, I mean, believe me, it is all hands-on which matters. Definitely theory matters, but when you go, when you hit the market, people want to know that what you know, you know, not theoretically, but have you have some hands-on exposure, right? Fifth is focus on niche skills. You know, foc uh, general vanilla is there, it is available. But niche skill is very, very rare, very difficult, very difficult to find a, find a trainer. Okay, so look for training institute who are providing niche skills. Last but not the least, take feedback from the existing student or the past student okay what is their feedback what do they see you know uh, now let me tell you no training institute can give you 100 uh, percent what you need or what industry need there would be gap the better option is that the lesser the gap the better it is okay so now i have reached a place where you know uh, uh, i want to um, invite uh, our panelist respected panelist uh, mr tathagato uh, on this and uh, after that we will uh, open uh, open the session for the for the q a so tata please uh, you are welcome and uh... good evening koshik and um, good evening everyone uh, 
thank you uh, Koshik for your presentation. You, you have taken us through uh, the entire thing in a very lucid manner and you get to know uh, so many things. Uh, so uh, just one, one thing I would like to add here uh, uh, regarding the market space. You, you, you have uh, well demonstrated in which part of the globe uh, how many cybersecurity professionals are required. At, uh, last year, uh, in the month of December, IEEE has released a um, um, survey report which says uh, a cybersecurity professional, 46% of cybersecurity professionals are getting a new job offer per week. So oh, that, 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 uh, uh, that's the market and that's the demand. So uh, normally uh, we know under any stressed out scenario uh, job securing your job is a critical thing and but in this particular field if you actually acquire the skill and if you can build your competency uh, job will uh, you know find you out uh, you need not to find a job so uh, that's the market is <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so with that note, Tatha, let me ask you one question, which I, you know, I often, uh, ask, you know, people ask me that, okay, fine, my son or daughter is doing, uh, you know, electronics engineering or some kind of engineering, and and she wanted to, you know, move into cyber security. So, what do you, what do you suggest? Okay, so uh, I mean, I suggest them uh, multiple things because I, before right. I suggest, I ask them. And okay, what is their preference? They want to become a software developer and so on and so forth. So one of the things okay. what I've seen is that there is an increasing interest mm. on uh, to become a compliance or GRC professional or an auditor. So can you some highlight that right. what is the prerequisite to become a, a cybersecurity auditor? How is the career uh, and uh, you know what is the job available in the market? How it is growing? Can you throw some light on that? Yeah, uh, very interesting uh, question. And you know, auditing or uh, GRC manager is a very challenging job and very interesting as well. So uh, we normally, as you also know, we consider uh, information security as a uh, super set because cyber is one part, but uh, we need to ensure information security. And information security is more of like a an orchestra. Uh, it encompasses so many things. And the GRC guy is just like uh, orchestra conductor. He, he or she should have understanding of all the components, right? So in an organization, you just can't say that I am a uh, database security manager. I only can ensure the database security. I don't know about anything else. Someone may not say that I only know the perimeter security. I can make sure the firewalls are good. But at some point of time, all of them should talk to each other. There should be uh, sharing of intelligence, uh, incident reports. And as an auditor or the GRC compliance manager, they should have competencies and skill uh, cut across all the domain. So that's why it is very challenging and it is coming up as a very, very lucrative career. People can uh, you know, build their skills on technology path on process part as you have correctly said there are uh, you know people process and technology but you know technologies are available and technologies are uh, you know it's evolving every day as a cyber security professional you will hardly get an opportunity to you know pick that existing technologies processes are laid down even now through rpa and ai we are also automating processes organizations are deploying robust processes without less intervention of uh, human beings. However, more focuses are given on uh, the people part where we need more resources, we need to train them. And we should ensure that people are exactly doing what they are supposed to do. And here the role of GRC comes. If you look at the auditor uh, role has two specific tracks. Either you can assess the technical uh, integrity of the system. It could be a website. It could be a design of the uh, entire security architecture. We know the buzzword security by design. Uh, 
not for cyber security even if anything if you, if you build a road you know construct a road even if uh, a flyover flyover if the design is faulty or to keep it patching throughout its life cycle right so your uh, entire ict infrastructure should be well designed all these should be the capacity should be planned and those, those so, design yeah. need to be assessed right so just 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 one thing you know just i thought you know it would be right time to ask you this question say you know many mm -hmm. uh, students ask me that uh, mm -hmm. i have i don't have science background i don't have engineering background maybe you know he mm -hmm. or she is from uh, sim ba like bachelor of arts or bachelor of commerce can mm -hmm. they become cyber security uh, auditor i mean do they uh, need really uh, you know technology skill how much is how do you balance between how much technology skill they do they need and how much auditing uh, cyber security audit certification skills they do they need uh, yes uh, anyone can become an auditor because audit is basically uh, a team play it is uh, very unlikely that one individual can cover the entire aspects of cyber security of any organization so there are areas where people should go and see the compliance level with certain aspect, some basic due diligence, like your antivirus patches are being updated or not. You may not need a very, very, you know, technical knowledge to understand that. If you have a dashboard which shows that, yes, this is the count of your licenses being deployed and this is a number that's showing that you have 100 licenses deployed and 89s are uh, updated with the latest patch and there is a gap so uh, it does not require any technical knowledge so i i right. I, I run a college where i have students uh, pursuing a full-time cyber security program who are from uh, commerce background someone from arts background and they're doing uh, excellent job uh, in in their own way and wherever they are getting an opportunity okay okay great so so let me let me also um, uh, take uh, one more important uh, you know feedback from you that mm -hmm. <clears throat> just to start a career say for an example somebody is, is graduate or class 12 mm -hmm. is it uh, mm -hmm. i mean where he where should he or she start cyber security as a career right after class 12 or after the graduation okay and what after that suppose after 12 he or she starts cyber security career what should be mm -hmm. the first training he or she should be going through and second and third and so on and so forth so if you have some guidelines there yes uh, very important because uh, as you have said that entire security is standing uh, you know on this cia track because confidentiality integrity and availability these three are more critical all we know but nowadays we know non repudiation is coming up as one the, the you know it's actually getting attraction on on top of these three so non repudiation is someone sh should not be able to deny that he or she has done this particular job now to to understand from that perspective someone should know what all component that exist if someone wants to explore his or her career he or she should first know what all components that exist in a cyber security ecosystem then as per his or her uh, you know aspiration or existing skill they should start you know sharpening their knowledge if someone is very familiar with playing with different applications switching among different you know application transferring data then he or she can start acquiring knowledge on that area I know some people who, who came from some hardware background by their passion they from the childhood they used to do uh, something with with the hardware so they start you know developing their skill on that particular area and in the last but one slide as you said after reaching a certain level then they can you know start exchanging their knowledge from other people and acquire other knowledges so any 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 cyber security course should have a, a good balance and, uh, and for a fresher he or she should look for a course which should give them uh, a clear understanding of all components at the initial level good good okay 
anything for me tatha if you if you want yes, to discuss yes uh, i, I was just uh, uh, trying to understand that as you run a huge sock and you know you also take uh, classes to my institutions so you know sock as evolving because uh, considering this covid scenario most of us are evaluating that if, uh, if the jobs can be actually executed at the home so we need not to invest more on the infrastructure uh, or the facility where we may invest further on the uh, on the this cloud part how remotely people can access and this is actually increasing the uh, opportunity for so many areas so um, as a cisco how you are saying uh, are you planning to recruit more people and what kind of skill actually you are looking for for you know if you can throw some light okay yeah yeah absolutely so this is a very very uh, pertinent question and uh, very close to my heart because i have been uh, into this this sock uh, area for a uh, couple of years now and actively looking across apj so what i see the trend is that many organizations are either because of the regulatory requirement they are building a sock especially the finance mm -hmm. fintech companies or finance companies because mm -hmm. that is been regulated by uh, very very strictly and uh, government enterprise even the small organizations are all wants their uh, you know their information security to be monitored 24 cross 7 this has mm -hmm. been for last two years there is a huge jump in terms of uh, you know people or organizations they are looking for uh, this kind of services and right. believe me we have recruited across apjc we have recruited more than 100 uh, you know, security, cyber security professionals. And unfortunately, we have uh, a couple of more, you know, uh, almost uh, uh, 400, uh, 420 uh, requirements across APJ. Unfortunately, we are not getting people, right people, I should say. Okay. Right. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. I can I can when remember a couple of months back you were asking for whether I have some you know skilled resources ready to and you know this is everywhere that uh, we have requirements but we are still not getting good resources. Yeah. So so here I just wanted to you know mention one thing. We are getting people who are theoretically uh, they know certain bit of uh, information security. Somebody is coming from GRC background. Uh, somebody is mm -hmm. coming from different different backgrounds. So but the point is what what they lack. Uh, you know, we are not looking for a person who can speak good English. I don't need that. I mm -hmm. need a person who can really do threat hunting. OK, right. I need a person who can do forensic analysis, malware reverse engineering. OK, mm -hmm. so these are the hands on skill and absolutely require a different thought process. OK, right so so these skills are lacking severely and and what i the one of the major objective of this particular webinar uh, what i understand is to give this visibility into the uh, to the audience so that they prepare themselves uh, you know uh, to uh, correct to be to be ready for these jobs right because as we have seen that you know it doesn't matter from which background they are coming the thing that matters that what approach they take you know someone exactly. uh, is given a responsibility how he or she is looking at the thing you know whether uh, they have developed the competency to go deeper and actually understand the motive and today's attacks are you know much more sophisticated not in terms of only technology but in terms of strategy as well so right. until unless you you get the nerve of the attackers you won't be able to uh, understand you know uh, on the other day we are working on a project together which was you know attack uh, because of exploiting uh, idn homograph so uh, the domain names or the website that we are booking which is uh, you know primarily in english language the, but the alphabets if you look at the russian alphabets some of the alphabets are you know identically you know look like english uh, alphabets so when we book and domain uh, it, it actually get booked uh, uh, as per the codes right so uh, people are unable to assess whether they are actually landing up in a uh, legitimate site or it is a fake site which is collecting their information so yeah. how to understand these skills are you know becoming uh, very critical 
for today's scenario and uh, students should learn any specific certification that Koshik you, you look for that what kind of knowledge uh, uh, is essential to become a SOC professional in an organization like Cisco or and now all you know Symantec, Train Micro, everyone is coming up with SOC. So yeah. So yeah, good question. Good question, Tata. So see, certification is one aspect of it, it but it is not everything uh, about a professional. We do look for certifications now to become a SOC, uh, you know, uh, professional or analyst. Uh, what we look for is that uh, uh, typically look for is the uh, SANS certification. Okay, mm -hmm. so, uh, and, and and one of the shout after certification is uh, incidents responder. Okay, right. So G, uh, and, and uh, that is that is one of the prime uh, uh, requirement. Apart mm -hmm. from that, you know, if the person is having uh, basic security, because See, before you acquire SANS certification, you have to have some basic uh, security mm -hmm. uh, knowledge mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. on a broad, which can be broad. So there we look for CISSP. You know? right. So what mm -hmm. I always say that, you know, people should be the first certification they should attempt is CISSP mm -hmm. in, a, in a cyber security space, because that mm -hmm. gives you broad knowledge about the entire strategy. domains of security. Yeah. And the strategy and then, part of it. Exactly. And on top of that, after you do CISSP, then you go for specifics. Okay. Right. If you want to become a database uh, security professional, go and uh, do that. If you want to become a cloud security professional, go and do that. Okay. So, but right. first your base landing space has to be CISSP. Right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Please. So primarily these two, you know, the first is your CISSP and followed by for a SOC incident responder is the SANS, uh, you know, uh, certified incidents responder certificate is the most, uh, you know, uh, common lookout. Right. But but and again, here here I want to say that, uh, sorry, Tata, uh, uh, no, no. but uh, don't take me wrong that the, I mean, uh, this SANS certification is is the uh, uh, it is mandatory no it is not mandatory right. suppose if you if you are already into SOC profession and you have been taken a good amount of training and you have been upgrading your skills and working in a SOC already mm -hmm. okay so your working mm -hmm. knowledge is more important right vis-a-vis okay. -vis so, a professional is who is joining the uh, you know SOC who want to jump into the SOC uh, kind of role Probably for them, the first certification could be the incident responder. That's what I'm saying. Right, right. Maybe, maybe you know, acquiring a certificate in in the uh, you know process path. Maybe someone who who is uh, not into this technical nitty gritty of it and wants to get into more of the compliance, the regulatory requirements, then then he can probably explore certification in the domain of uh, ISO 27000 which talks about security in, in today's context people can actually looking for ISO 22301 which which talks about how to ensure business continuity right, right. and you know you know Koshik, uh, I run a college where I try to you know build our entire program in a way so that people start learning from hardware network component uh, till deep web dark web then get into the processes legal aspect of it so that you know when a company like cisco or someone comes then they get someone whom they can actually train and make them uh, uh fit for purpose for their own usage even someone is working in SOC, not having any clue on the different component i was talking earlier uh, of the entire security landscape uh, may not perform well at the initial level so right. certification yes i do agree with you but uh, there are different different parts of certification but as a profession uh professional of this particular field uh, i think you and me will both agree that skill that matters and any 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 area any institute any course where you get to know how things happens and get an exposure to do this you know red teaming as you have I'm very happy to see that you have mentioned red teaming so when yeah. we developed the first cyber range in, in you had been to there and Gurgaon, yeah. right? So now there people 
get a chance to actually strike an attack and see how it behaves under an attack scenario and your whether your security resilience is actually saving you or just a myth right exactly so exactly. so if someone can practice that while learning this then he can actually fit himself or herself at any role isn't it? exactly so yeah absolutely so skill as you rightly mentioned that you know it is ultimately the skill which uh, you know drives you uh, mm -hmm. for a better role or for a better job i think mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, i think we we have approached the time and i would request uh, deepak to open the floor for uh, for uh, question and answers i think pradeep. for the viewers yeah pradeep so, yeah pradeep sorry yeah. sure kaushik uh, yeah. so dear and dear all uh, there is an option in the control panels uh, called chat uh, which you can use to post questions and uh, you know your questions will be uh, you know, picked up by uh, or rather answered by one of uh, the speakers uh, there's already few questions that are uh, you know queued up uh, i would like to read out a couple of them while we also uh, look for more questions from the attendees sure uh, i think uh, this question is from uh, prateek prashar again this is uh, on certifications uh, that uh, you were earlier discuss discussing uh, his question is can certifications like CEH and OSPB uh, help him in you know getting a cyber security job the answer is yes definitely but again as I as me myself and Tata has been mentioning that cyber security is a very big uh, field and there are di different various uh, various different different roles like your certification is uh, the CEH that certified ethical hacker okay so I do not know what kind of role you are looking for, but if it is a general role of uh, cyber security, yes, you are. Uh, you have certain, you have acquired certain skills uh, by learning those and uh, appearing uh, the exams. Uh, I don't know whether you are experienced professional or not, whether you have some hands-on, uh, you know, skills or not. But without knowing this, these two certification will definitely help you uh, to, you know, face the interview. And it all depends on uh, what the interviewer or the what, what the organization is looking for, and whether you match those criteria or not. That will be my response. I probably thought uh, I can highlight. Uh, I would like to add something here that yes, these two certificates are very popular certificates, and uh, my uh, suggestion would be the industry is not at all looking for any hackers. So these are the name of the course I understand and their contents are uh, good however from the skill point of view you the industry needs protectors they don't need hackers so uh, hackers you know if you actually relate with a physical crime if you, someone give you a knife you can stab someone but uh, to be a doctor you should know so many things right so uh, we need that kind of skilled individual so you, you should know so many things so uh, hacking is one aspect which sometimes restrict our knowledge in the application layer layer seven but to be a good protector you should have clear understanding of all seven layers uh, right so uh, one should acquire a skill across all these layer their functionalities then and whenever whosoever you uh, know wants to get into this the first thing they should learn you should keep learning you should learn how to keep learning because things are changing every day so so any certification is yes helps you but this is not an end of your learning this is just a journey which you have to start with the certification but you have to keep learning keep doing further certification kaushik has an almost 30 certification in his 25 years of experience uh, i'm also trying to follow him but certification is required but skill is again i'm repeating the same thing time and again you have to acquire skills next question yeah okay okay uh, sure there's another question from uh, this one is from abhishek uh, he says uh, he's a self-taught web developer and would like to learn about cyber security relevant to web development in particular uh, so is there a certification that uh, you would recommend for him? So what he can do is uh, I am sure that he must be following OWASP, you know, uh, guidelines right. and, uh, you know, framework. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So there is a, and there is also a DevSecOps, you know, earlier it was DevOps. Right, right. Yeah, DevSecOps uh, framework for them, they have a maturity, uh, you know, uh, framework also, uh, DevSecOps uh, security, uh, cyber security maturity model. Okay, they can, he can follow that. And uh, see, from a certification standpoint, yes, there are certification, but these certifications are basically training you on uh attacking the uh, application and seeing that you know whether your application is secure or not that is uh, application security okay it can be a static application security testing or a dynamic uh, testing but it is basically focusing on the application which you have developed how that application is uh, or uh, i mean resilient against cyber security attacks various types of attacks it can be buffer overflow it can be cross-site scripting it can be, you know, SQL injection, so on and so forth. Asatha, if you want to add something. No, you have uh, rightly said, but, you know, security, again, you should be proactive. You know, once you develop the website, then you go and test. No, you, you consider security from the beginning when you are designing that. So how people will interact. So that will ensure security. So there are certifications. Yes, as he said, there are frameworks like or WSP, you will always go to Google and see top 10 vulnerabilities, but that does not ensure that there is no 11, 12, and 13 vulnerabilities. So, you know, again, certifications are there, but yes, as a web developer, you have immense opportunity to go further and learn more on different aspects of the web presence of any application. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Next question. Okay, there's, uh, there's a next question is from uh, Dilip Kumar. Uh, he mm -hmm. says uh, he has uh, eight years plus uh, IT experience on different technologies, and he is now uh, learning web penetration testing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think his question is, uh, is, is there a career uh, that he can make out of learning web penetration testing? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Penetration testing itself is an activity within the entire cybersecurity practice. Okay, where vulnerability analysis or vulnerability management and penetration testing. However, this penetration testing is also a very important activity within the red team, red team exercise. Right. Because as the as the name says, that red team is basically, you know, they do in uh, they do uh, they check the organization's resiliency against a particular type of cyber attack it is scope based okay so uh, and one of the scope could be testing the application from uh, uh, to check their uh, uh, you know protection mechanisms against various types of hacking or attacking techniques uh, you know which can be mapped with your uh, you know <coughs> uh, that uh, attack matrix and uh, as a penetration tester he can be successful in that area. However, what I would recommend is that only penetration testing certification will not yes. take you so far. Okay, Correct. you need to have a complete 360 degree angle again, which me and Tata has been repeatedly mentioning that, you know, uh, you have to know that why you are doing it. What is the context? Okay, How, and, and are you making any impact to the organization? You know, you can do penetration testing, but is it helping the organization to achieve certain goals? Okay, to understand that you have to understand the whole business model of the organization. So from a security point of view, so those understanding uh, is very much important. And that's why I would always recommend that you get a certification like CISSP and on top of it, you do uh, your penetration testing certification that will definitely add value to your career. Tata? You want to add yes, just want to add uh, what you have explained that as you have started with red teaming. So red teaming is one part and we always know there is a red team and blue team and the whole exercise does not get completed until unless we have both these teams. Right? So when you are learning how to break certain stuff, you are demolishing something, but after demolition, you have to build something, right? You have to be positive. So until unless you know why you are breaking it, that does not make any sense until so you are attacking something you 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 have conducted a you know a biological test in in any any diagnostic center they have given you some result your cholesterol is such and such etc etc what will you do until unless the doctor comes and 
suggest you with some lifestyle some medicine some you know uh, diet etc then only it makes sense so one is you penetrate then show yes these are the vulnerabilities and those can be addressed by adoption of these kind of technologies or controls so that gives exactly. a completeness yeah. of your your learning but it, it, as he, he you know, Tata, yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. Tata, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. So, uh, from any part, the beauty of cyber security is you can start from anything. You can start from web security, you can start from penetration, you can start from assessing vulnerabilities. But after approaching certain part, you will see that everything is well connected and interlinked. So, yeah. you can and start that anything from anywhere. Me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, that reminds me, Tata is that uh, you know this particular uh, what you have mentioned that red team is basically to penetrate and break the controls uh, and prove that yes it, it is breakable and blue team's job is to defend those uh, attacks and right. and together when the red team comes back and supports the blue team to build uh, build a more resilient system this is Correct. typically called purple team right okay right so he can be a part of the purple team as well right so well, you can see that you you might be in a good faith that you have very secured system, but when when you see that how your system, uh, you know, responds under an attack scenario, then you can start, you know, rethinking. That you, you need to redesign. You need to reskill. You need to adopt new technologies. So actually, this is a career which evolves. Yeah, you can exactly. start from any point and gradually you get to know and you can start from any course which will take you through the entire journey that that hardware network their combination cloud uh, as you say devops you know the, the, the darker side of internet how what what the business is there how people are earning money what excites and hacker to break through that psychology then forensics so many things to learn and you can start from anything and then then continue this as a career okay 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 uh, we have uh, next question is from bhavya shri uh, and uh, you know she, she 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 wants to know some of the basic skills and certifications that are required to become a digital forensic analyst So uh, uh, let me take that. Uh, yeah, yeah, please, please. please. Hmm. Go back to this. So digital forensic analyst is basically, you know, it can it. Man, this particular job role can be uh, in two two uh, you know areas, two cyber security uh, domain areas. One is uh, definitely in the SOC, Security Operations Center, where you are doing forensic uh, investigation or forensic analysis on the attacks which have already been. Uh, already happened in the organization okay and you could be and this particular role apart from outside the SOC, this can be also with the law and enforcement uh, or uh, from a uh, governance and risk uh, point of view also you can map this particular uh, role so uh, specifically if you want um, if you want to know that what are the uh, the question was what are the certifications right skills and certifications skills and certification so for that what you need to do is you need to acquire uh, foresting uh, forensic investigation skills there are certifications from SANS and I would recommend SANS uh, though it is a little bit of expensive but these certificates are valid across the globe people really Correct. respect respect uh, those who are SANS certified okay and jobs probably they will pick you up you know because we 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 have seen that there are very few forensic analysts available in the market very very few okay so very good career option if you can if you can nail it uh, so so i would recommend go for sans certification for forensic uh, analyst Tata, if you have anything and and ccpa is also picking up because that that you know talks about how you are analyzing an incident that has already happened because you have to recreate the whole thing to actually understand what went wrong uh, you know sometimes it, it's not actually though it is a digital but it is related to 
some psychological disorder of an individual who started doing thing but at, after certain time he or she has lost control and uh, things went out of uh, the you know uh, they went just out of clue they don't know what has happened so uh, the ccpa also talks about the uh, analysis part of any cyber activity that that can be explored okay okay uh, the next question is by uh, Sukruti. Uh, she's saying that currently she is a service now developer and uh, she wants to move into cybersecurity and if and she wants your opinion if it is a good idea at all to move into cybersecurity domain considering that she's in service now uh, developer domain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, see, I mean, I don't know. I mean, how how many years of experience uh, she has in that particular domain. But irrespective of that, if you are a developer on uh, ServiceNow, which is uh, primarily I use it as ticketing platform, and uh, okay. I have, you know, I have heavy, heavily consumed ServiceNow in a couple of my, uh, you know, projects uh, where I've integrated uh, ServiceNow with the uh, with the SOAR platform and the same platform. To unify the IT and uh, OT as well as the security ticketing system. Anyway, but yes, that your your channel is open. You can definitely because you are coming from development background. You can also, uh, if you want to remain on the development platform, you can become a security software developer uh, in any of the organizations where, you know. In fact, in Cisco, we have a lot of opportunity for. Uh, Firewall, IPS, DNS security, then uh, you know endpoint security, then cloud security opportunities. You know, go to Cisco side, go to the job side, and see there are a lot of profiles already. You know, there are I think more than 200 profiles of software developers uh, coming from backgrounds like you. Okay, uh, would be required there. Okay, so there are a lot of jobs, uh, job opportunities available and uh, uh, you know you can become a, a security software developer now that's from a development point of view if you want to become a security analyst then you have to acquire some skills okay which are different from what you have right now so you have to probably you have to start from scratch in terms of understanding the basic security tenets uh, maybe you know uh, some basic course would uh, help you to do that and uh, followed by some uh, very niche, very focused uh, cybersecurity analysis skills, which I mentioned earlier, that you can that can be your your part. Tatha, you want to add something? Yes. Uh, uh, what I understood that uh, the kind of role that she is playing, we know in in security operation center, we need resources who are known as security coordinators. So coordinators need some skill which should primarily time bound prompt and they should know what to convey and where to convey and how critical the incident or the whatever has happened is so the kind of background that i i can guess from from the little bit with what pradeep has said you can also thought of exploring your career because as i said the cyber security is so large and the person who is actually you know managing the atm trailer machine is also a part of digital security because this enables us to do some kind of transaction digitally right so the field is so large you can explore certain things you can also go to cisco side you can uh, visit practices side as well we have some smaller courses for people like you and then you you can take small modular courses and then build competencies so there are so many areas you can be a secure software tester as Koshik said you can be a very good developer but you can also be a very good security coordinator uh, it's very yeah. important you need to coordinate with the regulators you need to coordinate with the law and enforcement officers and they all are very critical your shop can someone can come and shut down your shop for not complying regulatory requirements if you do not exactly. coordinate timely right so so area is huge. Yes, you, you can explore your career uh, highly in this domain. OK, OK. Uh, the next question is uh, from Praveen. And uh, he, he would like to know if uh, cybersecurity professionals need AWS, GCP, and Azure certification if they are going to work in cloud security domain. 
Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, you know, the, this is a no-brainer. In fact, if you want, um, <laughs> you know, if you want to, if you want to take a career on or build a career on cloud security, any one of these, you know, Microsoft Azure, Google uh, Cloud, or Amazon Cloud, uh, the basic certification is mandatory. You have to understand cloud first. Okay, without understanding cloud, you cannot become a cloud security professional. Okay, that's that's very much absolutely you know is the answer that yes yes these certifications are mandatory to take or to build cyber security career in a cloud environment. Okay, okay, great. Uh, uh, we have a lot more questions, uh, but we have actually run out of time. If it if you don't yeah. mind, I can continue the Q and A. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Or, yeah. or you can send it back to us, and we can't. Really, yeah. We can take two more questions, right? Two more questions. Sure. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, the next question is from uh, Shashwat Dasgupta. Uh, he he's in fact a B Tech in uh, civil engineering. Uh, he's still pursuing uh, the engineering program, uh, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have any prior experience. Uh, mm -hmm. But he wants to go into uh, you know cyber security domain. Uh, mm -hmm. So considering that he is in civil engineering and he is interested to get into cyber security. Uh, he, he's a little confused as to if he's making the right choice and you know uh, what will be his grasp of uh, understanding cyber security uh, domain if at all he pursues a program in the future so okay. let me take that because i can show him a live example uh, his name is shashwat right so shashwat yes, shashwat das gupta yeah shashwat there is a person in my team who has got absolutely similar background he was a civil engineer uh, he qualified in uh, 2015 he ran to me uh, kaushik uh, help me i don't want to carry, uh, continue with civil engineering he give me show me some path today you know he is working with me he is a successful cyber security professional based out of bangalore okay and i cannot give you any other example which is as live as this one Okay, so don't worry, don't be confused. Complete your whatever you are doing, but I would recommend to take a course. Probably, you know, Tatha can highlight. Uh, Praxis is giving an you know, excellent, uh, uh, you know, course uh, curriculum for uh, for uh, to build your cybersecurity career. Do some, do this uh, kind of courses. Do do one at least one certification, and you are on. So the only only thing what you know I would recommend is that. The person which I'm I'm mentioning who become a cybersecurity professional from a civil engineering course did exactly what I suggested him. That you have to do. You have to follow instructions to reach somewhere. Tata. Yes, uh, uh, I can only uh, say one thing to Shashwat that does not ma doesn't matter which industry you are in or you are pursuing your study in which domain you are dealing with data be it a construction be it healthcare be it power at, at the end of the day data matters right and you have to secure your data when you are compiling your construction material if you get a wrong information and and you follow the same thing with the wrong thing you'll end up doing uh, something which uh, may not be you know a solid and concrete one may fall right so data needs to be secured and anyone who is coming from any background acquiring this knowledge can help him or her to go back and add value to his or her respective domains. This is one angle. Second angle is yes, uh, as Kaushik said that in his team is working. I know someone who actually uh, came from, uh, no, she was in BA in English. Now she is working in one of the security operation center of a government organization in one and a half years so every knowledge uh, adds value and security is something which is a, a requirement of all domain all vertical that exists today yeah absolutely the only thing is that you have to keep that hunger on that you want yes. to learn you have to build your skills that you have to this do, you know, there, are, there is a career. Yeah, there is a career. There is a bright career. The road ahead is very, very clean, very, very you know, broad. And, you know, it can accommodate many as many as 
uh, you know uh, millions of uh, security professionals the only thing is that you have to come forward accept that challenge take that risk and jump into it and believe me it is rewarding it can give you uh, whatever you want you know if you look at the uh, financial perspective yes this is so rewarding and if you again if you acquire skill you can take any challenge in your career you can leave a job you can take a new initiative you can leave that you can do something else but only key point is you should have a skill then you be rest assured market will find you out you need not to go for a job exactly okay okay uh, i think there's a very yeah, yeah. similar question uh, with regards to what you just yeah. explained uh, this yeah. is by aditya yeah. and he says uh, he's a cyber law faculty and a computer oh. engineer with a computer engineering background uh, right. and he, he question is so what should uh, his path to become a cyber security professional from here on you know can, can, can he approach cyber cyber career shift uh, from academics to becoming a cyber security professional yes why not uh, I, I we have students who actually have pursued you know the career in law cyber law and this is an area which is evolving like nothing so now more we are moving towards the digital platform crimes are also getting shifted to you know from physical crime to digital crime and lawyers need to be more equipped with the technical aspects of this uh, particular domain. Then only they'll be able to actually, you know, understand what has happened, what went wrong, and then they'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, apply for, uh, apply the correct approach uh, or do the advocacy on behalf of their clients. Otherwise, they'll just become fool because the hackers are very, very intelligent. Right. So uh, having a knowledge in law, specifically in the cyber law, and these can make you a very good cyber security professional, good cyber security auditor. It's, you're always welcome in this particular field and you, you can actually do uh, excellent job. OK, OK. Uh, I, I think there are there's still a lot of questions uh, uh, again from working professionals from a uh, varied varied uh, you know uh, background and technical expertise uh, mm -hmm. i think uh, more or less uh, the questions are skewed towards you know the kind of uh, uh, you know the, the program that uh, praxis business school offers in cyber security mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. if, 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 if you could kindly brief us about the program the unique, unique features etc i think that should suffice most of the questions that attendees have yeah, so uh, at Praxis, we run a full-time, nine months full-time program on cybersecurity, uh, which starts with the uh, understanding of different components of cybersecurity. Then gradually, we we try, try to explore how those components talk to each other, how they become vulnerable, how someone can exploit them. And then it gradually goes into the latest technology like blockchain, you know uh, devops devsecops then we take them to how how the dark web as a market actually playing a critical role behind all these attacks which are happening and then with this also have a part in which which talks about and gives an exposure to hands-on in red teaming which kaushik has explained and then uh, the legal part of cyber security like uh, cyber law social media uh, how someone can you know become a victim of this thing then you know the whole industry is governed by different regulators if you are working in bfsi domain domain you have rbi and sevi if you are in telecom domain then there's a dot and try and in insurance we have IRDI. there are different regulators and regulators have their mandates in order to ensure cyber security of those particular organizations so our course also covers those mandates and their expectations then we give a opportunity to do specialization as a, a SOC analyst a digital forensic uh, expert and cyber security auditors uh, uh, application security tester so these specialization like prior to that they can build their competency and up, uplift their skill up to a certain level then they can do these uh, you know specialization which are market ready actually organizations are looking for these skills so after doing this specialization uh, their employability 
uh, employability increases automatically and you know we also have some uh, short term courses for working professionals which uh, we conducted in uh, uh, weekends and maybe some morning courses and evening courses we we have online courses available for working professionals on malware analysis uh, on digital forensic the fundamental of cyber security uh, on on uh, wireless security mobile security different aspect security in the financial domain financial frauds so anyone can visit Praxis's website and uh, and can talk to uh, reach us and we can explain uh, much detail after understanding their need, aspiration, and other contexts from which they are asking this. Okay, great, great, uh, Mr. Kaushik. Uh, any closing remarks that you would have for our attendees? Uh, of course, you know. Uh, so. I really enjoyed uh, the session and uh, the uh, the interactive part uh, definitely. But uh, mm -hmm. one guidance for the for the attendees is that um, you know <clears throat> building cybersecurity uh, as a career would definitely reward you because uh, you know I have been into this uh, for last 20 years out of my 25 five years of career and I have seen this evolving over a period of time and no other technology area no other business domain area have grown so much number one and number two even though there is a there is a fair bit of uncertainty in the market you know you go to any market there is a bit of uncertainty you know uh, things are not working uh, uh, you know and uh, things are uh, supposed today whatever is relevant tomorrow it is not relevant you know these things are happening in every market but security is one market where which is continuously getting invested and there are so much of evolution happening in terms of certification new trainings new domains are coming like industry 4.0 okay which is iot right. 5g you know these are demanding cyber security professionals who can of a new age you know the previous cyber security uh, professionals who have not upgraded their skills may not be relevant but with uh, all of you who are attending this probably i guess that you know, uh, you are either starting or have started your cybersecurity career. So there is a tremendous opportunity for you if you acquire right skills through various certifications, trainings, and uh, degrees and all, and jump into this field within uh, by 2021, 22. Okay, this is your one, time frame to grow further. Yes, and one, I would like to one add something. So, you know learning in bits and pieces certification is one thing but if you actually want to pursue this as a career then you should devote some time and you should actually participate in a, in a full-time program and understand the in and out of it because exactly. you know you know if you start acquiring knowledge in bits and pieces your return will also will come in bits and pieces so if you want to actually get a good return then you have to invest some time right uh, so if you invest some time and learn each and every aspect of it then only you can be rest assured that your career does not matter what comes and your career will only get you know boost uh, you know day after day yeah right absolutely Dr. i agree with you you know bits and pieces will not help uh, it has to be a very, uh, very uh, proper solid, learning. yeah, right. proper learning with with everything, you know. Uh, so that that's very, very important. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. I think there are still a lot more questions that the attendees have asked, but uh, due to paucity of time, uh, we would have to conclude the session. But nonetheless, uh, we will have these questions uh, shared uh, uh, with uh, Tata, sir. And I'm sure yeah, uh, he and his team you know, should be able to uh, respond to those questions that the attendees have that we have missed out on this session. So yeah. uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Kaushik Nath for taking time off his schedule and you know uh, being uh, available online uh, for the second week in a row. Last we were supposed to have the discussion last week, but uh, you know due to unforeseeable circumstances, we had to move this session to this week. It's uh, uh, you know uh, really great to have you. As one of our presenters, and uh, Tata, 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 uh, a, a pleasure to have you as one of our speakers as well. 
Yeah. So thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. Have thank a nice you everyone. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Take care. Bye.